Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Around Your Questions, episode 430. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. What's up, people? How's it going? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. And Brian Monjoma. What up, what up? All right, uh, we are missing half the cast tonight. Um, Chris and Adam are, you know, they have old man bones, as Manny called it, so they, they're either <laughs> disposed. And uh, Brett, who knows? Who knows what's going on with him? <laughs> so you got Brett, us. Brett will, Brett, Brett will slink in whenever he's ready, so yeah. it's all good. Yeah, we'll just well, leave the we'll just leave the cat door open for him to come in. Yep. <laughs> you know, as we as we say, uh, we call him Brett of the Wild for a reason. He comes and goes as he wants. Um, so we're not going to hesitate. Let's get into some questions for this question show. If your host could load this up, why is my internet being slow right now? <laughs> it's crazy. Come on. All right, here we go. All right, Dumeke starts us off tonight. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Final Fantasy 16 state of play? Does this game look to meet next gen expectations for a Final Fantasy game? Um, looks good. Had a lot of flashy stuff going on. Uh, I watched it with Manny when he was over on uh, Thursday night, and it was like, oh, wow, this looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Like, yeah, I don't really have much to add. It's like, it looks great. Now, will it meet next expectations? I don't know. You know, it is next well, gen only, well, but we did we did see that well, one clip of homeboy crawling through a wall. It's like, uh oh, here we go. Did we did? Here's the thing. Like, yeah, we saw homeboy crawling through walls, and we saw some other, you know, some other things. So, like, we'll find out when the day, the game comes out and it's running at 30 FPS and can't do a oh, ray tracing at 60 or something silly like that. Okay. Yeah, but no, it looks good. So yeah, hopefully it does meet um, you know, expectations. Um, Carlos, did you get around to seeing the the state of play? Yeah, I saw well, I saw the first half cuz it's yeah. like well, honestly, you could just watch like 2 minutes of it. And you're like, okay. Like you know what you're getting into. It's not like you're they're going to show you anything. It's like, "Oh, they showed this." Uh, even though I'm hyped for it, uh, it you know, the the state of play wasn't, you know, didn't get me more excited or less excited. It was just um <clears throat> You know, sort of like, oh, okay, yeah, that's stuff that I'm expecting from Final Fantasy game. Um, the open world looks nice, you know, looking, you know, looking like a, a more fleshed out world than any other Final Fantasy, obviously, because it's, you know, it's been a while since the last one, the last mainline one, at least. Um, so, yeah, I really like that. It looks like all the fields are all, I mean, all the areas look kind of uh, different and a little bit more vast they don't look kind of generic kind of you know final fantasy 15 great game but you know a lot of those areas look pretty generic um you know the only time the only time it, it actually changed was when you when you went to that sky castle part portion of the game yeah yeah <clears throat> you're like damn where was where's this been all game mm -hmm. uh, and and but you are only there for a minute so um but yeah everything about this game looks good um you know they talked about the combat and how it's it's going to be a action a completely action adventure type combat um so that was expected but yeah my hype for final fantasy 16 still remains strong uh looking forward to playing it when uh, when it comes out yeah um brian do you care uh it's partly like i mean i i had a look at the state the state of play it looked interesting um i like the Giant transformation battles. I thought they were yes. pretty cool. Um, I, I, I don't know what led them to do that in a good way. You know, I mean, like someone must have sat there and said, like, "Do you know what Final Fantasy needs? Giant kanji battles." And everyone just says, "Yes." So yeah, it's it's again, it's cool that they are trying something like that. You know, like you don't really get AAA games that like try something different every now and then. So points for that. Um, yeah, I I don't really have much criticism for it. It looks cool. Characters look cool. Look look interesting. Um, yeah, seems to have lots of content. So the only real thing I possibly have an issue with, and I'm finding it hard to actually have an issue with it, is how you can set up. I don't remember what the guy called it, but you can set it up so that you get like all these special items that are, like allow you to like dodge for free and all sorts like stuff like that which i understand it is fully optional yes which is great but at the same time it's kind of like how many people are just going to just put it on and then just press one button and finish the game so i don't know 
Yeah, when, but, when that yeah. part came up, Brian, Manny, and I were like, oh, game journalist mode. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So again, the fact that it's optional means that I really can't complain, but the fact that it's there, it's kind of like irksome, but it's like, hey, you know what? Fine. People, if, if people want to put on like brain dead mode and play, that's fine, you know? At least not playing with cheats on. No shit, we may. <laughs> we may have a related um, question about that. By the way, um, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the kaiju because it was funny. Like Manny and I were watching, like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Then as soon as the kaiju showed up, we're like, ooh, like, this is good, interesting. <laughs> you know. Um, also, fast travel. Yeah. Okay, that's the question that we have, right? Are you gonna fast travel to those places, or can you normal travel to those places if you want? Like, is the game really open world or is it just fast travel world? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, that like God of War is like the perfect example of mm -hmm. one of those that's like in, in the in-betweeners. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I I couldn't tell from the trailer. It, I mean, it looked like it was open world, but, you know, sometimes they could play, you know, those sort of tricks and gimmicks on for the presentations. So it could be that. But, you know, I saw the fast travel and I'm like, Good. Now I have to wait. Go through the the, the whole car thing. Yeah, because that yeah. was one of the annoying parts of the of the last game. Oh yeah, just driving around. Even I kind of liked it. Um, gave me time to tweet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to know, like, are you going to be actually be able to travel yourself, or do you? It's just you know the whole thing just fast travel. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, the game looks dope. I mean, again, I don't really have much to say. It looks great. I'm I'm there. I'm already. I've already been sold. You know. I, I was sold before they even officially announced it. I was like, "Give me that!" I'm already. Yo, man, they said Final Fantasy, and you were in. Yeah, the, I'm already. Like, I'm, I'm, a... I'm ready for Final Fantasy 17 already. Like, like, let's go. Um, all right, good <laughs> stuff. Uh, what's up? Anything else you guys want to add? Nope. All right, cool. everything looks good. We're good. We good. All right. Good. Uh, next up, another Final Fantasy question um, from Ace Ali. Oh, by the way, to make it, you asked us about. Uh, what games exemplified each generation for us, but we've answered that in the past, so that's why we're not going with that now. Um, Elden Ring. Yeah, hey, there you go. Um, Ace Ali. Um, this starts with a quote. Um, you know, Final Fantasy 16 might just be the best Final Fantasy game since Final Fantasy, insert Final Fantasy. Um, after what we've seen from the state of play, does Final Fantasy 16 have you expecting it to be as good or better than some of your favorite entries? Um, question for any panel member who has played or enjoyed Final Fantasy games in the past. No. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. Reason why? Reason why is because it's not even the same fucking game uh, type anymore. It's not. It's it's an action RPG. It's a it's a hack and slash. It's not a, a turn based RPG. So no, it will not. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to generally agree with that. I think it's going to be, I I think it's probably going to be better than 15 just because 15 has such a rocky development cycle. Like this one seems like they, you know, it's been like stable the entire time. So we're probably going to get a good story. Like that makes sense. Like, but I suppose like Final Fantasy 15, I th last third, it's like, what the fuck? You know? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like you could tell it's like, oh, that's from before, you know? Or the, yeah. Yeah, or the fact that, or the fact that they took a portion of the game and essentially put it into a, a, a CGI movie that you don't get with the game. Yeah. So I don't think, I think it's going to be more consistent. It, it might be the best one, you know, f in the last couple of years for sure. Not couple, a couple of decades probably because these games don't come out very often anymore, you know? Um, but I don't know if it's going to beat like my personal favorite, which is 10. I, that's going to be hard to top. Um, I will say this. Yeah. Good. Um, man, many brought up the obvious with, with the gameplay differences, which is the biggest ones, but I've also noticed the story differences are, are yeah. more drastic. I, I feel like the, the, the earlier entries were a lot more serious and a lot more, I don't know. It's, they just give me a different vibe than, than the newer, uh, type final fantasy stories. Especially starting from ten, starting from ten all the way through fifteen, they just they have this strange kind of <laughs> narrative style. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to describe it, but it, it just feels like different story type of storytelling since sort of ten. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think this one might be different. Like more serious. I mean, during the beginning, like you see a kid covered in chocobo blood. It's like okay, 
they ain't fucking around right now, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, but, but, well, but, I, but I can't. It, yeah, good. Isn't it like a higher rating than most Final Fantasy games? Now, I think too? it might be. I think it might be the first M-rated Final Fantasy. Don't quote me on that. Oh, it, oh, yeah. If that's true, is it me? Yeah. And, and you know, and take this how you will, but they did say they were inspired by Game of Thrones. They want to be gritty like that, you know. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, like I said, you got choke over blood on a bit on a kid. It's like, okay, okay. You got, you got, you guys are serious right now. You know? Um, yeah. It's hard. To, it's hard to answer the question because, yeah, uh, it is you know, hard, we're yeah. final fantasy has been, you know, we've been playing final fantasy games for decades at this point. And it, the, the reason why we're playing, we've been playing it for decades because they've released some of the, our favorite games of all time. So, you know, it's just hard to compare, you know, something that, you know, have made us love gaming. As compared yeah, to just it, a game yeah. that comes out. Um, d- just for the record, so yeah. I need to cut you off. Um, I don't know if this is the first one, but this game is M-rated. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it now from the a- ESRB. It is M-rated. Um, but Manny, go ahead. You were going to respond to what Carlos said about how the game has been with our lives. Oh no, movies. yeah, it's. It, it, I mean, again, it's like it, it's a it's a game made for the mo- it's a Final Fantasy game for made for modern audiences and modern tastes. It's not taking. It's not. The class, it's not the old classic versions of Final Fantasy where their turn base have, have gone, have been gone for at least what? When would Lightning Return come out? 10, 20 years ago? Yeah, 2010 no, 10. came 12. out. 12. Yeah. So, yeah, 2010. So, yeah, 10 years ago. So, that that was about when the, the turn had 13. already started to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, j- just to clarify. So, yes, Final Fantasy 16, Carlos, will be the first M rated Final Fantasy game. Wow. Um, yep, and it says right here, um, it's M-rated because it has blood and gore, partial nudity, sexual themes, strong language, and violence. So there you go. That's that's interesting. Oh, I'm 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 a, I'm more hyped than I used to. So that's good. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I could read you all this shit if you want, <laughs> like all this stuff. <laughs> um. Oh wow, sexual moaning sounds in a brothel. Such. <laughs> what? Well, excuse, excuse me? me. Oh shit. <laughs> You had my attention. Yeah. Okay. This sounds good. Yeah. The the words "fucking shit" are heard in the game. Uh, partial oh. exposed breasts and buttocks. Okay. Oh damn. Okay. Here we go. The ca- I'm reading this from the ESRB. Uh, the game contains some sexual uh, um, material. A character caressing and straddling a man in bed. References to prostitution. Sexual moaning. Sounds in a brothel. Dialogue such as "I'd be happy to show you, provided I can I can afford it." And thank you for your service. My chamber is just upstairs. Uh, some characters are depicted with partially exposed breasts and buttocks. The words fucking shit are heard in the game. So, yeah, this is crazy. That doesn't sound crazy at all. You could literally do that in a, in a fucking um, PG-13 movie. Yeah, not in a Final Fantasy game, though. Um, oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah, in a Final Fantasy game, you can't do that. You haven't seen that. No, um, I'm yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, like, that, 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 th- those, if those are the things that give it the infomature rating... Nah, yeah, see, those are kind of weak. Yeah, but, but remember, again, we live chuckable, in modern times. Animal, then again, yeah. chuckable blood all over kids' face. So then, you know, there you go. There's him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brett showed up. Cool stuff. What's up? Uh, we're talking about Final Fantasy 16. You have any thoughts? Uh no, nah, man. I'm just. I haven't been too. I want to like Final Fantasy since they did the combat switch over. Uh, not really finding that I do all that much. It's just. Doesn't it? I, it's not a turn based, but it also doesn't feel like a really well fleshed out fighting game. If that makes any sense? Yeah, they, I, well, this new one they, is. Yeah, this new one. They actually have a Devil May Cry guy doing the combat, so it might be that. But no, bro, we were just talking about the fact that you had to verify this. This is the first M rated Final Fantasy game ever. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, which is I interesting. Mean, most- so well, many games no, are rated M these days. I don't care. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm. It's not really like a matter of guessing. Like I looked it up. It is actually the first Final Fantasy M rated game. I'm like, okay, oh, interesting. You know, so we'll see. So, yeah. so uh, I can't wait for the I can't wait for the PC mods where they throw Dante into this. Yeah, right. <laughs> um. Anyway, let's move on here. But Brad, you showed up in time because we got some Xbox questions that might be fiery. I mean, I'm not the Xbox. I mean, whatever. Okay. You, well, you, well, you, know, you listen. You kind of listen, are. you've said <laughs> you, you, you've you've said you, you've have said more than one good thing uh, about uh, about Xbox. And you, apparently, you have been uh, dubbed the Xbox. Um, yes. Um, you know, uh, Dude, I swear to a- advocate. I sw- even though, even though theoretically, it should be Adam who'd be the Xbox yeah. uh, advocate. No, I swear, it's like I swear to God, it's like just because I criticize the left doesn't mean I'm conservative, y'all. Same, yeah. same, same difference. 
But all right, let's do this. All right. Um, but yeah, these are all for us. Um, Jay Shep, the, he, the, he, he has the, a bunch of these. What's up? By the way, Brett, you are sounding very good. Well, thank you. I'm, uh, I I bust out my old Turtle Beach mic. It is on its last legs, so we'll see how long it lives. But hmm. um, it's it's been used to the point where, like, the wires on the inside of the cord are, like, I guess they've been sat on or folded too many. Like, it's where the cord meets the 3.5 millimeter jack. It's dying. Oh, Safe to say, out of, like, a decade of use. So, 10 years ago, Turtle Beach, good brand. I can give them a thumbs up. Today, I don't know. Ask Tony. Okay. There you are. Dirt Joe Beach is still good, you know. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, Jay Shop, any? I, I just saw him in the chat, so let's go. Um, okay. Um, I've listened to a few podcasts after the Redfall news. Instead of conversations about, uh, instead of conversations being about the many lies of Xbox ex executives, including the fact that, uh, that Redfall was already delayed a year, but it's still 30 FPS. Or how Xbox plans to run Call of Duty on Switch when it can't even run Redfall at, at 30 frames on Xbox Series X. I hear the conversation shift to whether or not they care if a game is 30 FPS and not the principle of Xbox's actions. As a former Xbox fan, it infuriates me to see Xbox get left off the hook again by its consumers. My question is... Will Microsoft management continue to get a pass from Microsoft consumers as long as Game Pass exists? Damn. I mean, are you, are you saying Nintendo or Jim Ryan don't be lying all the time? Like, it's just, I'm not, it isn't what about ism. It's just, this is kind of the day we, the age we live in. Um, I'm not really sure about like a whole lot. <sighs> I don't know that there's been that many times with Xbox that I think that they've been like straight up being um, straight up being dishonest with you. I, I think sometimes they give you the news they want you to work because it, it always seems like uh, a fraction off of the truth. You know what I mean? Like it, it's always like, oh, yeah, it'll run at 60 frames. We hope so. Um so I, can anybody be more specific about like the exact instances that he's he's talking about? Well, the thing I know, is in I know the, yeah, in the past, you know, they've and we got a question about this too. Uh, they talked about the power of the Series X, how you know it, it'll like it'll match like PCs or something like that. How you know you don't have to worry about games running at less than sixty frames anymore. Then this game comes out in exclusive, and I think people are right to question that. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, it's they're, they're being tied down. Like, yes, in theory, if they didn't have the Series S that they had to develop for as well, yeah, that, that'd probably be a thing. I mean, the the, the Series X, like, technically speaking, is a, is a solid piece of hardware. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a great PC, but it's enough of a PC to play most of the PC games. And in a world where not many people own top-end PCs, it, it doesn't feel like it, at least. Not as many as they used to. It's it's kind of middle of the road. Um, as far as the console, I think it's got decent power. It It's a weird trade-off between the two systems. It's got more power. Sony has better memory. So, like, which which is more important? I honestly can't fucking tell you. Because it, it seems very situational. Um, so, it's... it's It is kind of like a PC. Um, when you tell me games are going to run at 60 frames... Here's my answer. 100% always from now until the end of time. Bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. Because if they have the option to make a game run at 60 frames per second or make it look nicer for screenshots at 30 frames a second, guess which one they're going to go out of, go with 11 times out of 10. It'll be the nicer one. We keep hamstringing ourselves. We keep... And, you know, and it's the same reason we don't get better gameplay or destructible environments. Like we're, 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 as we said on the podcast before, we're chasing the shiniest games ever, and sometimes that means that they're just like, "Wow, we're gonna we're gonna turn it down." So you, you give them power, and they're like, "Cool, we're gonna make a sixty FPS game." And then the next game they make, well, we had to use that power, so it's back down to thirty. You know, that's one of the last podcasts. We're kind of like, <laughs> I just get used to thirty frames because it's always going to go back to that, unless unless I'm on a PC. And again, a PC works like that because most PCs are above average. And the average is kind of determined by how good everything else is. So if you're building something to be 30 frames on average, and you have a machine that's better than average, it's almost always going to be able to push that 60. 
right? So it, it's these are these are these kind of soft floating targets, and it kind of feels like this weird goal moving kind of thing because it's all arbitrary and in relation to each other. So no, by that kind of definition, no console is ever going to be as good as a PC because the second they got as good as a PC then it would all be pushed down to 30 frames a second again with better graphics, and then somebody would go, well, I need a nicer PC, that would become the new above average, and that would run at 60 frames per second. Is that making sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, you want to... Oh, somebody left. Anything else you want to add to that, Brett? Because there's something else um, about this question I want to jump on. No. No. Yeah. Um, the, only, the thing that kind of struck out to me was that... Um, Jay Shep, and I'm glad you're in the, the, the chat right now, that you wanted them to focus more on, you know, the the lies that Xbox has said instead of the game. I think you those are kind of two separate things in a way. I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about that because I think you absolutely should. Um, but if you're talking about Redfall, I think the conversation should first start with, here's what the game has then you could talk about the other stuff instead of making that other stuff the main focus if that's what your question is about you know well um, I, I think you're upset to be right about uh, yeah. you're you're right to be upset about redfall but i don't know if it's so much like you lied to me i think the problem here is you guys set a target and it doesn't seem like you managed to hit it you failed to hit the target and that's after promising that you were going to hit the target right like yeah. that's that's like going uh you know um over budget and over time on a task kind of thing. Like it's, it's when you're making things, you, you kind of promise you, you, you make guesses about the future. And this is one thing like uh, that. I, uh, another reason I don't get weird about dates, uh, release dates. Like, do you know how hard it is to say definitively how long a creative endeavor is going to take? The only people that ever get really pissed off about those kinds of deadlines are the people that have never really, done creative endeavors because it's not like building an ikea desk you can't look at the instructions and be like this should take me about 45 minutes shit happens that's just that's the way it is sometimes that the best people at creative endeavors are the ones that learn to produce and produce reliably but it's it's never an exact thing so it's it's yeah they they from the outside looking in what i'm seeing is they overpromised, they under delivered um, they, they promised they, you know, it's going to be 60 frames. I didn't seem like you were going to do that. It's going to be ready a year ago. Yeah. Well, been in that position before. It's why I give a, a range whenever I do a tattoo, like, I don't know, nine to 12 hours. Don't shoot me if it's 12. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, he, he said that he agrees with what I said. He just says the other part of the conversation about what Xbox promised doesn't get brought up in these other podcasts. Well, it's a good thing you got throw down because we brought that shit up real quick on Thursday, didn't we? You know, on the on the Wednesday show, I should say. Like, we talked about that. Oh, very interesting. Microsoft has said this, all this stuff, and then look at Redfall right now. We brought that shit up. That's why I tell you, don't listen to those other bullshit podcasts, man. It's in a throw down, man. Throw it out for life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just being straight, straight up honest, yeah, there seems like a lot of problems. Yeah, there's, there seems to be more than a few development hiccups. Yeah, they are not hitting the marks that they set out. Am I still interested in playing the game? I mean, it's 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 a vampire shooter that I essentially get to play for free. So yeah, man, I'm I'm still pretty excited about it. Yeah, um, if you buy an S, you pretty much know what you're getting. Yeah, and, and again, if you've been listening to Throwdowns this whole generation, I've been vehemently against that system. I don't think it should have oh, came out. You know, that it, it's holding everything back. Developers have said this. I said that shit from the jump. It was going to do that, and look what happened. You know, I, I was it, against that shit from day one. You know, this is like uh, I'm, I'm gonna be real controversial here for a minute. Whoa. This is like in the '80s movies when somebody has to drag their retarded little brother along with them everywhere, and it just <laughs> stops them from ha having good adventures. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, all right, we're gonna go play in the quarry. Bring your brother Michael. God damn it! Now we can't go to the quarry. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, and then for, for the actual question, because it's kind of, you know, yeah, it, he goes, will Microsoft management continue to get a pass from consumers as long as Game Pass exists? That's an interesting question. How does it so, so much get a, a pass? Like, it's it's not uh, an emulsification, man. Like, you can be critical of some areas and happy with the uh, others and then kind of step back and say, okay, well, overall this, like, uh, like I said, I, personally, as as just a console fan, like, bro, everybody's been lying to me. Console, like, 
there's a there's a reason Jim Ryan is named Lion Ryan. And again, not a what about is him just being like, that's what it is. So like when a company is a little when if if I'm looking at a company who only lies to be 75% of the time, I'm like, oh well that feels like an improvement. It doesn't make it good. It doesn't make it a standard that we should all set just be like, oh, this this seems to be better. But like there's no way in hell that they're putting I I don't not know why Nintendo signed a contract for Call of Duty. And I'm pretty sure Microsoft is gonna be like, here's Call of Duty. It's your job to try and make that shit work. That's not yeah. on us. Yeah. Um, um Yeah. No, I was just gonna say cause because um Jay Shep says that um, if these same things happen for other platforms, somebody would get fired. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong. I'll give you an instance. And this is not what about ism, but you asked the question. Um, Mark Cerny with the PS4 said 1080p 60 frames expected to be the standard this generation. That was not the standard that generation at all. And I'll throw it out again. This is how long this fucking podcast has been going on for. When he said that, we were like, bullshit. That ain't happening. And it didn't happen. Yep. You know, these companies always do this stuff. I'm not excusing anybody right now. You know, you yeah, should hold your feet. They've been promising fire. 60 frames for how many years? Yeah, exactly. You know, they've a been decade ever. So, yeah. I remember and they can do well. it. Yeah. They can. They just choose not to. That's 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 the weird thing. Like, they're just like, yeah, nah, let's just yeah. do something else. Oh, no. It's he, cool. Okay. Yeah. He goes, I mean, um, that consumers are okay with Xbox's action as long as they continue to get Game Pass. No, I, I, yeah. I know what you mean. Like, here's here's my question. Like, what? There, okay, so I'm just going to throw this out here. And if, I, if I'm guilty about the whataboutism and the fanboy stuff, just, just let me know. But it's really hard to talk about this stuff in a vacuum, right? So, like, I'm not, I'm not really sure what he's saying other than standard video game, failure to deliver, trying to give you the best business spiel not living up to it like what am i missing no i'm not sure but my thing is and i gotta ask this and jay shep maybe you could help me out with this who is giving who is giving microsoft a pass because they have game pass not on throwdown i'll tell you that not me i've been calling out game pass for a while too i'm like listen that service good on paper but it ain't got no fucking game so it so it, it don't mean shit you know but uh, so are Xbox influencers giving them a pass? Like who is giving Xbox a pass? Because as we've demonstrated, I'm not even, and I'm not shilling for Xbox right now. They get a good brunt of shit for good reason because they haven't been delivering the goods. I don't think anybody is giving them a pass aside from the hardcore fanboys. You know. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I kind of see less. Get, I, I kind of see less and more guilt in places like, yeah, they they have not necessarily delivered on some stuff that they're like, yeah, Redfall is going to be 30 frames, uh, 60, 60, or 60 frames per second. And it's going to be out uh, a year earlier. But like, again, you can't talk about this stuff in a vacuum. What happened to, we believe in generations. Like it's, it, there's, there's big lies. There's little lies. There's lies that impact you. There's lies that don't impact you. And like, again, I'm really trying to see my own bias here, but like, as somebody who owns both consoles, like I've, been a little pissed at Jim Ryan specifically. I'm going to start pointing out. It's not even necessarily sorry. It's fucking Jim Ryan. Um, but like, I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of that with, with Xbox and, and even the opposite, you know, they, the, the whole, we believe in generations was a response to them saying, we're going to support the lower, the, you know, the last generation of consoles for another two years. So don't expect anything other than that. They tell you when there's going to be, um, Starfield at the show, so they're not rope doping you in. So you wait for an hour and be like, "There's no fucking Starfield news." Like, um, and so maybe I'm just seeing places where they're trying to kind of be forthright, mixed in with you know all the other business bullshit. But like, like yes, like please, if, if you're if you're in the chat, like give me give me an example of like your worst hated your your a couple of your worst hated Microsoft things. Because like maybe I just didn't catch some of this shit because it didn't affect me, but. You know, like Call of Duty on the Switch. Why do I give a fuck what Microsoft says about the Switch? I mean, and, and also this is a whole thing that's tied into this fucking like literally we're we're in a situation built out of lies and started by lies. Like it's just it's it's a big knot of bullshittery, and so I I kind of expect it to be bullshit all the way to the the gooey center, you know. Hmm. So like you know, they're like, yeah, we'll we'll put it on Switch. You're like, mm-hmm, sure, you will. But again, this whole situation is bullshit. You shouldn't have to be in here at the beginning. So the only reason that we're in here at the beginning is because it's because Sony 
decided to fucking lie and start trouble for the industry because they didn't want to lose money and be a sore loser. Like, I get it's not optimal. You didn't have to pull all this shit out. Yeah. Um, all right. Jim, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's easy to hate on Jim Ray. He's a fucking asshole. I've been dunking on this guy since 2016. Ever since he had that bullshit. Nobody wants to play old games. Now, so he's offering a bunch of old games on their s- service. Ain't that something, you know? Um, all right, uh, moving on here. Another one from Mr. J. Shep. Um, do you guys remember back in January how a leaker told us Redfall was in bad shape and needed to be delayed again while Starfield was in even worse shape? It seems like that same leaker might be like that same leaker might be legit. If that's the case and Starfield drops a buggy mess at 30 frames a second, would that blow be too deep for Xbox to recover from? It would look good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You think you think Starfield's gonna be 60 frames? Yeah, that game ain't gonna be. Oh no, that game frames. is no not gonna way. be 60 frames. No yeah, no way. way and no Bethesda. Like, dude, like it's there there <sighs> Doom was 60 frames because it was low resolution everything. You couldn't tell because you're always moving too fast and the rooms weren't that big. There's no way you're gonna get a Bethesda game at 60 frames. No way in hell. And I don't I don't even see that as a failure. I just see that as they they're cramming as much as possible until the Xbox starts to fucking smoke. And then they're backing off a little bit. There ain't no, ain't no way in hell they're doing 60. And no, I don't think that that's going to be a critical blow to them. I think, here's the thing. I think the, the way, the, you know, when, when in a situation where gameplay really counts a lot, like, you know, like for Doom, uh, it, it, they, they, you know, ID Software always, always sort of went for optimization, right? You know, I guess the biggest exception was Doom 3, where they went, you know, with that. Th- I think that was the first one that was in 30. But yeah, I think it, and you know, not to mention the new Doom games are not open world. You know, they're sort of like, you know, clocked down to specific locations. So yeah, but I mean, here's the thing: like, yeah, nobody, you, you can't think that the, the, this new Starfield game is ever going to be running at no 68 frames per second. No fucking way. With these consoles, no way. Mm-hmm. Can I also well, say it is? That, I That'd mean, be I'd great. be fucking impressed. Yeah, that'd be, That'd be great. great. Yeah. But but Brian, you, you realize that the assumption we're going under is it's not, you know, and there's a reason for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. But do you think that's a wrong assumption? No, I totally agree. I just wanted to play Devil's Advocate. Yeah, take sure. a page out of Brett's book. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, yeah. So I mean, that lets you that the fact that we're just assuming that, and we're probably right, uh, lets you know a lot. You know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Again, big ja- giant ass open world game. Bethesda, mm-mm. don't expect that shit to be no sixty frames. Takes place in outer space. Yeah. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. No. 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 Now here, here's the thing. I'll tell you right now, you're going to be disappointed in this game because I believe that just about every Bethesda game ever made has been launch, uh, buggy on launch, ugly as sin, and never ran. Yeah, over 30 frames per second. Sometimes it even dropped down below that, and they've all been wildly successful critical hits. So I don't think any of that matters. I think as long as it's fucking playable and doesn't come out in a Fallout 76 state, then we're fine. But even that game seems to have fucking recovered. Like, the, the people will put up with a lot when you give them this big open world and the ability to dig down into all the crevices. And I think they'd put up with it less if somebody else managed to make another. Like, if but somebody else made a Bethesda game, that'd be bad for Bethesda. But so far, nobody's been able to do it. So we're getting a Bethesda game in space and everything that entails. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Carlos, any thoughts on this? If you're around, guess not. Um, he busy. Yeah, he's busy. He, yeah, he's, he, you know, Carlos actually is always on 24 hour uh, standby. All right. Um, I don't really have much more to say about that. Don't expect that game to be you no know, 60 frames. No fucking way. Um, all right. Got a couple sponsored questions by Mr. Romudeth, a very generous fella. He is sponsoring more of J Shep's questions. Um, okay. First, everything's coming up J Shep tonight. Yeah, man. A lot of questions. Um, a few social media personalities and influencers were invited to get a sneak peek at Redfall's gameplay. These influencers showed the game. Um, these influencers showered the game with praise while neglecting to inform fans about the game's buggy state and the fact that they played it on PC and not even on an Xbox console. One person referenced an, a- an NDA without explaining how they were able to break that clause. Now, my question is: since Xbox Series S is Microsoft's 
best-selling console this generation do gamers deserve to see series s footage along with series x footage at xbox showcases um all right i gotta i gotta unpack some of this stuff here you gotta understand when you go to these events and i've been to many myself right you can only talk about what they tell you to talk about right or what you're allowed to they give you a list of shit you cannot say right so anything beyond that you could talk about but if they specifically say you cannot say this you cannot say that you can't go against that unless you're you know you want to your access revoked right this is how we got the cyberpunk situation right the game the people played right was the first four hours or so on a pc and they were not allowed to talk about any part of the game after that and as you know the first couple hours of the game is the most well optimized and the pc is the most well optimized of the game even, even i mean it was now i think now everything's fine but in the you know when it first came out pc was the best version so you can't really blame these guys for not talking about something when it probably stated in the nda clause do not talk about this do not talk about that so you can't really hold that against them you know um so that's why like i said about that then the the second part it would be nice if we got footage of all the consoles like imagine if we got i mean we eventually got cyberpunk footage of everything right but yeah it would be nice if we got footage of every single version of the game so people could accurately judge what they want to buy companies aren't going to do that they always they will always present the best looking version of their game even if it's doctored you know if if it looks the best on pc they're going to run it on pc they don't give a fuck because they want to sell you the game and unfortunately there's no like legal things against that, even though it feels like there should be, um, but they can't. They're always going to present the best things. I remember back in the day with video game magazines, man, you look at those screenshots, those screenshots were fucking doctored, man. Like they made them look like the game don't look like that exactly, you know? Um, now we're kind of getting the equivalent of by going, here's the PC version running on a fucking $5,000 rig, you know? Um, it sucks, but that's just the way it is. And um, it would be nice if, you know, people come together. But as, you know, and Jay Shep, I know you always ask about these questions like, why can't there be consensus with this? Why can't it be because it's that? There isn't. Everybody does their own thing. Every developing studio does their own thing. Every gaming site does their own thing. No, there is no grand unifying thing in gaming. So you're never going to get that. Uh, but with this specific case, you can't blame the people who are at the event for not talking about things because they were not allowed to. That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know if anybody else has any anything you want to chime in with. Um, all right. Um, moving on here. Another one from Mr. J. Shep. Uh, do you guys remember last year at the gaming at the game awards when Microsoft was missing in action? Everyone wondered why they didn't show Redfall, Starfield, or Minecraft Legends. I guess now we know why. Uh, thanks to Tony, Chris, and Carlos, a.k.a. Miss Cleo, for calling it out back then. Uh, do you guys expect to see any actual gameplay from any games besides Starfield or Redfall at the upcoming Xbox showcase? <laughs> They're going to show something. <laughs> They're going to show something. I just don't know what the fuck it is. I can't answer this, man. I've been asking myself this question about Xbox the whole fucking generation. What games do they have? You know, I want to see Senua Sacrifice. I want to see it. It ain't. They probably. Who know? Who the fuck knows, man? Who knows? The only. The only thing we see from that is um is them essentially demonstrating the technology that they have. They yeah. Keep showing us tech demos. I, I've said this before, and I've said I said this last generation, and I'm saying it this generation too. I've said it many, many times. I feel really bad for people who, who are just die-hard Xbox guys because you ain't getting shit. You know, and it's sad. You should be getting more. You guys deserve better than this. It's pathetic, you know, what Microsoft is doing to you guys, you know, but who knows, man. We're going to get Redfall. We're going to get Starfield. And about beyond that, who the fuck knows, man? I have no idea. Um, does anybody else have any guesses? That's what they might show. Nope. They've been, they've been mummed the whole way, so we'll see what they got. Yeah. Uh, Assyrian Air Force is not about what games Microsoft has. It's what games Microsoft has bought. Where are the games at? Right? Where, where are the games at? Um, all right. So I, the fact that we can't answer this lets you know. All right. Um, let's move on here. Mr. Kishak, 
who showed up. I like he showed up like, yo, but the answer to my question is that, no, man, we're getting to him, you know? Now we're here. Um, okay, Microsoft touted the Xbox Series X as, quote unquote, the world's most powerful console and that it, quote unquote, eats monsters for breakfast. Uh, do you think that is now backfiring when they can't even get a first party game like Redfall running at 30 FPS on their own console? Yeah, I mean, we already kind of touched on it. It's like these guys love making these big boasts, but we, we call them out on it, man. You know, and again, this is a question we had from the jump when this generation. I'm like, OK, the only games, the only reason games are running at 60 frames a second right now is because they're all last year games. What the fuck's going to happen when they're current gen games? I think this is what's going to happen. So, it's we shall see. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I don't think. Um, I mean, you know, to be fair to, to Redfall, sixty frames a, a second performance mode is coming, right? It, it, it's coming. Um, but yeah. I actually have a question. I actually so, don't know if you guys even talk talk about this. Um, the one thing that I seem to have an issue with is that no one seems to be talking about when the sixty frames will be coming. Everyone seems mm. to be just on the on the idea of like, oh yeah, it's. It's all 30, and again, they mentioned 60, but they didn't say when. So do we actually know when they plan to patch it in, or is it just some point in the future? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think just said like a couple, couple months, but like it's a guess. Yeah. No, Brian, I'm glad you asked that question, because that question should be asked. Okay, you're coming down later? Cool. When? Yeah, because like, again, I because I'd like to know because because then we can at least like have like an idea. But it but if it's just like oh yeah, it's in the future, like it's post launch. It's like well, technically with post launch Final Fantasy fifteen. So what's your point? You know, yo, to to make it, he just showed up. He, he brought up a great point. <laughs> he goes, sixty frames is coming if the game does well. If it tanks, it'll be thirty FPS forever. He might not be wrong. That's think, true. Think about it. If the game bombs, they'll be like, okay, oh, fuck it. What's the point? Man. Ah, I don't know. So we'll see. Um, all right, Brett, here's a question you're passionate about or a topic you're passionate hey, about. Real, real, real quick before we move so, on, like, I, like yeah. um, I'm not sure if it's because we've just been talking to j a lot tonight, but, like, I've been hearing a lot about, or if it's just because Redfall, um, like a lot about you know, thirty FPS, thirty FPS, thirty FPS. Apparently, it's terrible. But like, what games on consoles? There, there's only like a handful of games on consoles that are sixty FPS. Or am I mistaken on that? No, is there, is, the, the, I think it's because of this generation. Says most games so far have run at sixty FPS. This generation, people are, have been spoiled. Um, but you're right. Before that, that 60 FPS on console well, like, was kind of a rare thing. I agree with well, you on that. You know, was like uh, God of War 60. Oh yeah, it was. It had a, it had a 60 FPS mode. There are very few games that don't have a 60 FPS mode, and when they don't, oh the, the mode, the mode. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, every, yeah, every, yeah mo most games. Okay, like have them this generation. But you're right. Before that, 30 FPS on consoles was pretty much ubiquitous. You know? Well, no, I just had to ask because I never, like I said on uh, our last show, like I don't play in performance mode. I play in quality mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, yeah. I don't know. I literally have no idea. I was like, are a lot of these running it? Like, because I don't want to, like, usually when I put it on 60 frames, I was like, ew. Everything looks blurry now. Yeah, yeah. No, every every major game has had both modes. I don't, I, don't, yeah. I think, I don't think every game has pretty much this generation. Oh, go ahead. Okay. There is, so, yeah. there is one game that did not, um, Gotham Knights. Gotham that's Knights that's not, the only one that I know that does. We don't talk about Gotham yeah. Knights. And, and Brian, I, I think if that game would have been successful, 60 FPS would have been added. That's my conspiracy theory. So mm -hmm. are, are people, like, just to try and get clear what people are upset about, like, are people upset because it's not coming at launch? Because it sounds like people are, like, are, are thinking, like, are judging it like it's not coming at all. And, like, maybe they're right. Like, if the thing flops, it, it won't come. But, like... Um, I mean, fuck, like, GTA Online didn't release for a year after the thing. I, 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 I'm not saying it's a win, for God's sake. It's definitely not. They're just trying to get it out the door because they're sick of delaying it because people are getting pissed. Microsoft's probably getting pissed. They're like, where the fuck's our game? But, I don't know. Yeah. I, it, it just seems like a weird... It, I'll, I'll be honest. It seems like people are looking for shit to complain about. 
uh, to make that, it says it's because it's a first person shooting first. It's a first person FPS first party Xbox game that's at thirty frames. That's why it's a big deal. But it's going to be at sixty. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. Brett, so like, I, but, Brett, I totally agree with you. Like, again, I've not been following it much, and I wasn't here on Wednesday. But it, to me, it feels like they're just trying to find like any any spat against Xbox at, at this point. Now, keep note that I'm sure that a lot of people that are upset about this and calling it out are the same people that are upset that um, when the news came out that Redfall was initially planned for PlayStation. So it's just kind of weird how they've gone from like, oh, yeah, why don't we have Redfall to, oh, Redfall sucks. Well, yeah, we can't have it, so we're going we're gonna to talk shit out. But like, like, okay, so like... You just asked the question, or you just said like, um, you know, first part, first person, or first party Microsoft Studio shooter being released at 30 FPS, asterisk at launch. Like that's how you need to be saying it because when you just say 30 FPS, it paints a different picture. Again, I still honestly wouldn't fucking care, but like at launch, like that's that's not an issue of them not delivering. That's an issue of them not being efficient at delivering, which. I mean, maybe as bad as you think, but or maybe just as bad. But like, it's there's a qualitative difference there. Maybe I'm just splitting hairs, but there is definitely a qualitative difference. And if they don't come up with it, then fucking in hindsight, we can be like, remember that time they all said they were going to bring a uh, 60 FPS, and then they fucking didn't. But as of right now, like, oh look, a feature from a, a modern AAA game is not going to be ready when the game releases. Shock and awe. Wow. <laughs> um, Logic Wind says, to answer Brett's question, I think this matter is the straw that broke the, the horse's back. Um, we're tired of getting bad news from Xbox. I could see, I mean, I could see the frustration there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think back to the earlier question that was asked of us, like, with Game Pass, like, that is the thing that I think... It's not that people are like, oh, I'm okay with them lying to me and everything like that. I'd be like, and there's some things that they're really doing that are, are, are pissing me off. There's some things that they're doing that are kind of making me stop... From, you know, just kind of stop me from walking away. So it's it's a mixed bag. But, you know, it, but I'm pissed off all the time at everybody. And I'm trying really hard to just enjoy mediocre shit and enjoy my hobby because I was coming dangerously close to... Just not, honestly. Like, I know I got back into gaming after Rachel died, and I had been there for a while, but, like, I don't know that I, I hadn't really been digging in and enjoying games. It was it was so much fucking stress, and it was so much, I don't know, so much waiting and saving all my money aside and then fucking getting a game and not necessarily be happy about it. It built up to be this whole big fucking thing, and now I just feel like it's... It's a casual thing. I've got backup games on Game Pass. I've got major releases I'm looking forward to. Like, I have the option to play multiple video games at any given time. I get to sit down and be like, I want to play some video games. What do I want to play? Like, it's honestly not that bad. I think we've gotten so used to complaining over the last, what, five years towards the tail end of the last generation and the, the utter bullshit we've gotten this generation. But it something's changed. And I'm having trouble telling you exactly what it is, but something's changed. Maybe it's just ease of access to video games. And you know, maybe it's like when I got Netflix, I'm like, oh, I like watching movies more instead of playing, you know, The Office season seven for the billionth fucking time. But I, I'm telling you, it's great over here. Y'all should try it. I just, just get the salt out. Just try and get, cut people a little bit of slack and people are still going to do bullshit fucked up things. And it is infuriating. But, you know... Try and pick out the the little bits of pearls in there. The little, you know, the little pearls in these giant pile of shit. Because you know what? Otherwise, it's just all shit. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on. Nick Kish asks another question. Um, and again, Brett, I know you're passionate about this one. Um, this topic. Um, with Nintendo and Sony counting sales as a show of a game success, and Microsoft considering engagement as success which one is more useful and accurate in the current gaming landscape i think current gaming landscape is the the thing we need to focus on here honestly i mean we could call the fanboy for this one engagement because i, I am so the same thing brett th I, awesome i'm so fucking sick of a game selling based off of the merits of its previous title 
and then everybody realizing it's a hot steaming pile of shit and dropping it by the third level. And they're like, look at how fucking great this game is. It is a massive success. Like, no, no. It, you should really be judging it on engagement and how much of the game they're actually playing. If, if 90% of your fan, play, fan base plays 10% of the game, you didn't do a good job. That's like, that's like being like, we, we, I released a movie. Three quarters of the people who went to see this movie walked out, walked out of theaters in disgust. But they all bought a ticket. It made $900 million. Critical success. It is a, a win. I'm going to make nine more of these. Like, well, that's not really a good way to look at it because if you look at it, ticket sales, yeah, that was a success. But is it a success in the minds of the fans and the people who did it and the overall fred? Like, if you're looking at the more complex issue, I don't think that's necessarily a success. I think basing success strictly on how much money was generated, especially when you need to pay that money before even interacting with the product, it's it's not the truest metric, in my opinion. Um, Blitz says, here we go again. How do you judge the engagement when it counts people playing for five minutes and deleting? Well, because it's not, you don't count engagement for people playing. It's, it's not how many people turned on this game. That's just as bad as saying how many people bought this game. It's the same thing. You shouldn't count success as, like, if somebody walks over, if I'm at a tattoo convention, somebody walks over to the tattoo booth, looks at my portfolio, talks to me for a minute, and then walks away, right? Like, that was not a successful engagement. Just because they came and talked to me, I'm like, well, it's not like I talked to like 500 people today. It's not how many appointments I set. It's about how many people have some of the product and then want more, right? Like, it, I wouldn't be giving out free samples of hot dogs at the store and then boast about how many free samples I gave away. I'd check the metric of how many people had those samples and then came back for more by purchasing some. And that, in that instance, yeah, like if you have um, a beta or um, a demo or something like that, that can help judge or help make sales a little bit more true to source. But no, like if, if, if I just kick on Game Pass, try a game for five minutes and then say it sucks, like, no, that shouldn't give much uh, metric at all. If I put 200 hours into it and I 100% the thing, that should count for some more. Yeah, but the thing is, companies now, they do just lump everybody together. You know, it's like, oh, we had 100 million players. Even they... Eat, you know, kind of, you know that, what I'm that's saying? An right? arca yeah. That's an archaic system, and they don't need to do that anymore. All our consoles are fucking hooked up to the internet. That's just bullshit and lazy. Yeah. Well, they no, are, but they, I know, but thing. I'm saying that, that's, the what, they, that's they, what they currently do. Go ahead, Brandon. Here's the thing. They, the thing, thing about it is they know how many people are playing through their games and finishing them. The, you know, you wouldn't any every single time you get one of those those trophies or whatever or those achievements, they know what's going on. It's not like it's it's just randomly throwing it, you know, and in, into in, a void. So they are fully aware as to who who is completing their games. So oh, yeah, yeah. why why aren't they? You know, like why isn't that a, a thing? You know, like why like you completed a, this this many people bought the game and this amount of actually completed the game. I mean, I don't even know. Yeah, go Brian, ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. No, um, to further Manny's point, like they, they on, they know because, like, you know how at the end of the year, how they give you like those stat things, was like, oh yeah, you played yeah. eight hours of this game and you played whatever. You know, like, they know the hours people spend on these games, and they, like, they have the numbers. They're just not telling us the numbers. I don't know why. This is oh, why I know I like why. Steam. Because, um, well, yeah, I'll let you explain why soon. But yeah, this is why I like Steam. Because like, like any time that someone reviews a game, it'll say, say, okay, this person played X amount of hours before they did this review. Like, that's incredibly useful. Because then it's like, oh yeah, this guy played like 10, he played 10 minutes and gave the thing a bad review. Clearly, that's some nonsense. Oh yeah, this guy played like 3,000 hours. Different story. And even to go back on, on on the question, I honestly think that engagement is way more telling than, than sales. Because everyone here, including people listening, we've all bought a game, physical game, and not played it. So just multiply that by how many people are doing that on a regular basis. Oh yeah, they buy a game, they don't play it. They buy a game, they don't play it. Or they the buy a game, it goes somewhere off in no man's land. So sales are just completely useless. And when you factor in the idea of pre-orders, like that's that's literally just fake pumping the numbers. Like how many people just pre-order a game simply because, oh yeah, it's like the new hype game, everyone just pre-orders. And then suddenly like day one sales, it's like, oh yeah, it sold X amount of millions. 
And then, what, like three months later, sales down 75%. You know, I mean, like, that's... It's, 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 it's so telling that these guys are just trying to push sales numbers. This is why I mock Horizon 2 for that, because I'm like, just, mo- just pushing a nonsense number that, for the most part, is archaic and is, is redundant. I'd rather have a system where it's, it's like Steam, where they say, okay, this is how many people are playing this game at this point in time. Boom. Accurate numbers. Well, semi-accurate numbers, but it's very useful. Because then you can actually see, okay, like, how many people are playing this game at, at, at this time? And then you have people there that say, okay, let's put it in, like, into a graph. And then you can see the um, daily average people that play a game and track it over time. And then you get stuff like the, C- the Steam charts, where you, you, you can see like really cool trends, where it's like, okay, this game sees an uplift of people when there's like a new DLC launch or something. Or like with The Witcher 3, where it's like, oh yeah, there's a massive uptake of Witcher 3 when The Witcher Netflix show came out. And like th- That's really interesting metrics. And that's way more important to me than just, oh yeah, Witcher 3 sold 20 million copies. It's like, yeah, that doesn't tell me anything. All that tells me is that lots of people bought the game. And that's it. Yeah, uh, but let's go. So uh, these guys, I'm guessing he's talking about Brian and Brett here. So these guys think people are more likely to play a game through they didn't pay for. I don't know where you're getting that from. I mean, no. Um, He goes, thing is with a thing with sales is you can also see engagement as well as money made. I mean, yeah, you can see, and well, and that's the thing, you you can see the money made um, and the sales, and you can judge them still off engagement, even off a game that you sold. Yeah, he's saying you could have both. I don't disagree with that. (laughs) Well, that's exactly it, and that's my point, is that if you have both, then you have a common metric between things that are sold and things that are not sold to judge engagement by. Yeah. Um, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, that's that's the the point in the nutshell. Like, I and I, oh, excuse me, I really want to stress this. You can look at games that have physical sales and also tell their engagement, right? So you can tell from a game that's physically sold, you can kind of tell its success on two different metrics. And then you have a game that's not physically sold; it's just given away. You only have one metric to compare that to, or to compare that with. And so the the common metric between them is engagement, which is why I say I think engagement is more important. And also, I just really want to point out something that, you know, kind of uh, what Brian said, like, um, the reason um, the reason that they don't look at engagement and they look at profits, and this is, in my mind, is just the real fucked up part that speaks volumes, is because engagement isn't something they care about. For the most part, they don't care if you're having a good time. Only as far as it, it, it concerns them that you'll buy more product. You know, buy product, consume, buy more product. <laughs> like, like, it's, it's so weird to me that even as fans that we go off of that metric, right? Like we should be talking about how much fun a game is, how much we've played it, the experiences that we have. You know, Bioshock is a story that will stick with me for probably the rest of my life. Like... How the fuck do you quantify that? We're not the business. They're the business. That's their fucking job. We should be critiquing things on their merit and how much we enjoy them and how much value they even give us. Because, yeah, some games, seven hours of amazing fun. Some games, seven hours of meh. Some games, 10,000 hours of meh. Some games, a thousand hours of fun. Like, it, it... I don't think that, and that's why I like. I don't even think that there's a perfect answer here because some games are too short, you know, to play, to to invest 200 hours in. Um, some games are too short, you know. Um, you can beat them in a day. So like, okay, 90 percent of the people that play this game beat it. Well, it's a four hour fucking game. Of course they beat it. Um, so it's it's difficult, but I, I, if I had to guess, what I would look at it is, it's like cleaning your plate, man. If I bring you something and I set it down in front of you and I come back and you're done and there's three quarters of it left, probably didn't do a very good job. But if I, if I give you a plate of food and I come back and you are licking the plate clean, I probably did a pretty good job. So like if you do everything or a huge amount of stuff, 
in a game, you spend a lot of time there or do everything of the limited things you can, that's a pretty good judge of metric. But again, that's not their concern. And that's a problem because motivation dictates how people act and how people treat you. And so we're in this weird place where because they're judging things off of sales numbers, it doesn't matter if they trick you. That's why pre-orders are a fucking thing. They can give you some lame digital outfit for a game they're pretty sure is going to bomb and then call it a success because they got a billion people to pre-order it. It's, I, I don't think you can say a game is successful um, based off of its accomplishments before anybody's interacted with the product. You know what I mean? Like, I can't buy a couch online and then tell everybody what a great couch it was before it's delivered to my house. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't said it yet. I don't know if it's any good. Be like, well, it's got to be a good couch because 10,000 people bought one. Well, how did they feel when they got it? That doesn't matter. Everybody hated it, threw it away in six months, but it sold 10,000. You know, it's, it's just a weird concept to me. And I would love for somebody to actually explain it to me the other way around. Like, why should we look at sales metrics? Well, what, thing, what does yeah. what, my, my thing is I, I prefer sales metrics just because it's easier to judge like, hey, this game sold. Tw By the way, I'm not discounting anything you said. I actually agree with you. But I'm like, it, it's a lot easier to go, hey, this game sold five million. This one, this one told 10 million. That one's more successful. Very easy. Right. But the thing is, the question was in the modern age. And I hate to say this. I hate it because I, I, I don't like this whole engagement shit. But that is but probably, but, but but yeah, but, but it but this is the modern age. We have to just a, accept it. Um, but my yeah. thing is, I, I this is what I would like, and we're not gonna get this. I would like it if the companies actually disclosed how much money each game generated in total, because that would be the real way you could test a, a game's um, longevity. Because that accounts for everything, right? DLC, uh, skins, all this other shit, right? Um, how okay. much? Let me revenue, ask you this. No, no, let me finish. That's what I think. That's what I would like because then, because to me, it's all about the money in the end. That is what. That's what I. I, I really gravitate towards more. How much money did this thing make? But sales aren't as accurate. And Brian, this you talked about this before as revenue, right? But we don't really get revenue. Um, that's what I think. And now that we, but the thing is, now that we have this murkiness going on with engagement and Xbox Game Pass fucking everything up, um, I think maybe we should push for that it's like hey what what revenue how like okay this game's on game pass how much money did it generate uh, that's what i then we could accurately judge because if you tell me oh 15 million people played it for five minutes okay great how much money did it generate compared to something sold physical you know that's what i want to know go ahead bro. but is financial that? success equivalent to regular success and if so back up what is regular success? So, regular success would probably just be like the the broader term. Like the, the be, one of the better examples I can give is like Mass Effect Andromeda sold a ton of copies. Was it a successful game? It pretty much killed off the franchise and damn near the studio. So would you call that a successful game? It sold a lot, yeah. but it 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 really harmed the company. And I so I would not call I would call Andromeda a failure of a game despite how much money it made because it ruined a franchise. Yeah, and I see what you mean, but the thing is, I'm just speaking personally, I have a hard time, because to me, when I hear success, I think money. That's the first thing, I think. Can but, I, can but, 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 but you are right, like, there is another version of success, but it's a little bit, it's not tied down to anything concrete like money is. It's you know tougher to I mean? quantify. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my issue with it, but I see what you're saying. Go ahead, Carlos. There, There's... I want to, this is one of the best test cases to whatever discussion this is. Sorry, I got I got in late. I'm, I've been in and out. Well, um, that's why I was calling you. Before, like, where the fuck Carlos at? Yeah. You put I, out the Carlos I, signal. You know, <laughs> my bad. Fucking taco uh, and shit. <laughs> you <laughs> you got man. <laughs> gotta eat. You know. Um, <laughs> um, the, the, what's the biggest, what's the biggest quote unquote, uh, Brett, what was the term that you used that the, that Tony asked you to define? Engagement? Oh no, regular success. Regular success. Regular success. What? 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 Which game failed at with flying fucking colors the most in the past ten years? <laughs> you mean Cyberpunk? Exactly. <laughs> Would anyone consider that a failure? At like just just in general, put everything together into a bin. 
I don't think anybody would, especially CD Projekt Red with all those sales numbers. Well, I mean, but, it it that that kind of made the comeback. If it if they didn't fix it and just left it as it was, oh yeah, oh yeah, I would have called that a failure. Same with uh, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky sold a bunch at launch. The shitty version. Yeah, because remember, Cyberpunk but, uh, that shit sold 15 million from the jump. You know, but if but if but if Cyberpunk never ma- barely made a dime and just had the bad publicity, they wouldn't have the money to 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 fix it. Neither would yeah. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky, they, it was it was an in, it's an indie project of a dude that spent you know I, I'm guessing most of his capital on 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 that game because it was his studio, and the game sold gangbusters. So it gave him ample years to to keep on fixing every single thing and delivering all the promises that he you know he gave when the game before the game even released. But that was only because of the financial success of the game. And then how much it sold? Yeah, well, you can take a non like in terms of like the game itself. Let's set aside financial on on No Man's Sky. Like, was No Man's Sky? It was a financial success. If you ask me, was it a successful game when it came out? Like, no, that thing pretty much made everybody in the world hate you, in which they never bought the game. But you mm-hmm. fixed it. It's not. This isn't a thing that's locked in stone. Right, he 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 went in. He put in the time. He released a bunch of stuff. He did it for free. He fixed his mistake. Not every fuck up is permanent. And so he turned it from that goodwill or through that goodwill from not successful to hugely successful, and that led to more people buying it and more financial success. So I mean, these are tied in together. But um, I don't think that I don't think it's permanent. I think after something's been successful, it's it's kind of tough to ruin it. Unless you're like J.K. Rowling, but like, um, well, I guess that game did well, so just her name's besmirched. But um, I think it's tough, tough for to take something successful and turn it not successful. But I think there's a lot of precedent for things that weren't real successful, like Rocky Horror Picture Show, kind of finding their market and then becoming successful. Yeah. All right. Anybody yeah, else? It, it, it's just it's just hard for me to not say something is a success because the mission forget the mission statement of whatever these companies tell you they are their mission statement is all the same let's money. make as much freaking yeah. money as possible and that's why i always see success tied with money like i can't i very difficult for me to separate the two you know well i know yeah that's Even, their version like should we like should our definition be the same as theirs though we're the consumers it doesn't matter to us if a game is profitable or not yeah, what matters I, to us yeah no i i, I understand but i like I like their version, which is my version, as far as I'm concerned. That's my metric of success. It just so happens to be their metrics of success, you know? I get that, but then there's so many games games that are successful that are terrible. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. And movies oh, yeah. that are successful oh, yeah. and terrible. Look at all these fucking yeah. Transformers movies, you know? They're successful yeah. as fuck, but they suck. But they're successful. You can't take that away from them, you know? I mean, yeah. th- like I said, Andromeda damn near killed Bioware. Yeah. But I, I, we don't even know if it's did it sell that well. Yeah, let me check. We 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 gotta verify that because I don't know if it sold that well. You know, maybe it initially did because of the name, but you know. Um. Anyway, let's move on. Um. Got another one from Tumeki. Um. I, I moved this down the line because uh, it's like separate from the other stuff we've been talking about, but it's still a worthwhile question. <laughs> he goes, "I'm a hundred percent sure. I I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I want to ask this, but." Did anyone watch the final Zelda trailer and what did they think? Um, he, but here are some takeaways uh, he noticed. Um, and I'll list them all. Okay. Um, being able to build makeshift mechs, flying machines, and boats. Rocket arm. Uh, hints at dungeons or dungeon type missions with the mission impossible drop through the laser tunnel, etc. Um, scenes of Link fighting alongside champions as well as villagers, plus a scene of him pulling a bunch of. In a cart, I think maybe you build an army to fight Ganondorf. Hyrule is the same map, but different. Can see areas have changed, plus you have Sky Islands and Underground. Link has a shield fused to his sword. Seems like you'll be able to get very creative. Uh, wingsuit in order to glide. Oh, in order to glide. Um, looks like you can set traps. Enemies seem to fight each other now. Looks like looks to be running nicely in a trailer. All right, so those are his takeaways. So uh, I'll just be, I didn't watch, I don't care about this game. I, I, I saw the first original trail. I'm like, oh, it still looks ugly like the original. No thanks. So don't care. 
Um, so did anybody else see the latest trailer? Yep. What do you think, Brett? And remember, people, Brett was a big fan of Breath of the Wild. Um, it actually made me think the game looked a little bit better than I had thought on the the first one. But I did my uh, genuinely my thought on seeing it was ah yes I too have seen Roblox. Um, <laughs> it it it's just. <laughs> It's well. It's a very. It's it's not a new system, man. Like I used to play this like free game on Steam where you got to like build hover cars and tanks and shit like that. Like out of uh, you know actual like little blocks that each took individual pixel uh, uh, voxel took voxel damage, and so like you could blow the wing off a plane and it would just, just then spiral down because it wouldn't be able to turn anymore. Like it's it was it was pretty cool. Um, and this seems like a very minimalist version of that. I, I kind of feel like this is having a little bit of identity crisis. Um, there is a bunch more new map. Um, the old map doesn't look all that changed, though. And from what I was seeing, like, it looks like all the shrines are gone. Like, it looks like the old world kind of feels empty, and it's just now this kind of middle... Like, it's... I I don't understand. It doesn't feel like the main world has as much to do. It feels like it's like in, in an overworld when you generally have a regular game, you're like, okay, so here's a dungeon over here and here's a dungeon over there. So you go, you come out, you run across a field and you go to a door, which is really a teleporter, which teleports you to the inside of a dungeon. Cool. Um, now I'm going to run across a field and go up and so instead of like it, it just it just feels like hey instead of like walking through a door to get to a dungeon how about we fly up into the sky to get a dungeon and then we go back down to the ground and we run along to another place and so like the dungeons are still separated from the main landmass but they're in the sky as opposed to like in a mountain in a cave or something like that I'm like it's I see the mechanic and I kind of see where your brain went with it I don't see how that's going to be super satisfying then because it, it feels like you've separated the open world from the meat of the game. You know what I mean? And that's not necessarily a good thing. I want my open world and gameplay to like, kind of be real close all, all up on each other. Um, and this, it, it, I will, I will it gives me this, a weird I, feeling. I don't get it. I will say this. Uh, w when, when I was watching the trailer, but the last two trailers, the the building mechanics seems like a straight up Brett feature. I'm like, oh, that's that's Brett, that's Brett, that's Brett right there. You should, and and I'm like, I think that's something that, and actually, it's something that looks enticing to me. Um, no, but I do agree. It, cool. Yeah, and I, and and I do and I do agree with everything that that I do agree with everything that Brett said. Um, it yeah, it's it, it looks like it's part of sort of just more of a. I don't know. It's like a mile, kind of Miles Morales ish. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a more expansive game. I don't think it's going to be close. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm still I'm still kind of looking forward to it. I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not down on it as much as everyone else is. But um, but I wasn't that high for Breath of the Wild. One of the things that I that I actually did like about Breath of the Wild was that I used to call it a, I used to call it a shrine dungeon, a, a, a shrine crawler. Um and. Hmm. And that's the part that I like the most, but it looks like, you know, just from looking at some of the trailers, I'm, I'm not even sure if there's going to be that much, if any, shrines in this one. We'll see. Um, the weapon de degradation is still there, so that's a negative. And obviously, you know, we've it's been, what, 2017, so three, six years since the last game, and it still looks like a, you know, PS3 kind of title. So uh, it's 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 hard, man. It's hard. Bro, you gotta love how most games are like, people love collecting armor and weapons and getting a whole bunch of them. And Nintendo's like, hold my beer, we're gonna do the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like I, I got a, I got this cool, you know, I got this cool ass sword for the first time. Oh, breaks it it breaks after like 20, 20 or so hacks. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I want to read this comment from Bliss. I'm not sure I understand what he's getting at. Um, it's something about something you said, Brett. Uh, he goes, so Brett saying Nintendo don't know how to make games like taking a new feature and assuming it'll just be like a free game on Steam. That's seriously underselling what the potential is. I'm not sure I understand that. I mean, no, that's just a mechanic 
that I've seen used before, and it's not, they're not reinventing the wheel. I mean, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's a perfectly fine mechanic. Most games involve mechanics. I'm familiar with this one, so I was like, okay, that, that seems pretty cool. I, li I like building stuff, but... Oh, the building mechanic, okay, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, you know, something you like. By the way, I'm purposely just not saying anything because Blitz, I know you, you get very upset when I talk shit about Nintendo, so I'm not going to say nothing. I'll keep my mouth shut. But you know I how mean, I, I feel already. I think the building thing is a unique addition. Like, I don't think climbing, I don't think Zelda was the first game to do climbing either, but like, it's the first game to kind of utilize climbing instead of here's a yellow marked area that allows you to climb a, a wall. You know, it, it was the idea behind it of giving a little bit more freedom that kind of made other games want to try and follow suit. And you're seeing that a little bit more, um, you know, so this could be kind of the same thing. Like I, I do love building stuff and I love that they, I love why they did it. I think that's my biggest part. So they were looking at the metadata from the shrines that people were doing and which ones people liked the most. And there was a couple that people had found that these kind of alternate ways around. And normally Nintendo's not real big on letting you do anything you want. They're not big on critical thinking or neurodivergent urgent thought or any of that kind of shit. You do it A, B, C, D. That's how you do it. But they were finding that more popular ones were ones that people had kind of found hacks and ways around. Like I remember one, there was um, like this huge, it was this, this fucking big crazy thing with spikes and a ball and shit everywhere like that. You had to like, tilt the playing field for the, uh, by Tilting the Wii, I just I was in hands hands on mode. I just dropped down onto my back, flipped it upside down, flipped the literal board all the way over, ran across the bottom of it, and then flipped it back at the checkpoint. I loved that shit. Um, and there was ones that like you had to tie some shit to like that people found that you could hook balloons to blocks and like fly up into the, and then kind of cut it out that way. And they went, okay, so it seems people like making solutions to their own puzzles. Let's build around this some. So I like that. I think that's cool. I think they made some really weird decisions of like, I get the Sky City, right? Like, and I could be very wrong about regular Hyrule kind of being the same. Um, like, it, maybe if they gave regular Hyrule a massive overhaul, um, that'd be pretty cool. They did that with Burning Crusade and WoW, and like, it really did refresh things pretty well, but that's not what I'm seeing for the trailer. I'm not seeing like, anything grandly different I'm not, I'm not seeing like oh you've been sealed away for another 400 years and shit has changed it's it just seems like yeah this is the same world you were in a you know a couple years ago but there's stuff up in the sky now like okay i'm really confused as to how they're going to make it work because how did new shit get there from just a couple of years ago if it is the same and if it isn't the same how did it change not necessarily criticizing just like i don't know how you're doing that and the sky thing i think it's I think it's cool, but that's the part that I'm like, that's the gimmick to me. To me, the big sell is like, oh, yeah, you can build stuff. And they integrated that with the Zelda games. So that should be fun. Um, but again, all they're doing with the Sky World is making the partitions between kind of dungeons and zones have to do with verticality as opposed to being an instanced area. So it's it's the same thing. Just you get there a little bit different. Like that's like saying it's not an ice cream cone. That's a milkshake. Oh yeah, well, yeah. And it's kind of the same thing. It's just how you get there is a little bit different. Um, so I think the thing that they're really showing out there, like the sky world, is. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm just kind of eh, not so. Especially after Wind Waker, I'm like, yeah, you guys just feel like you're trying to do. Well, what if what if the Earth were all mountains now? Um, so, kind of mixed. I, and I really would have liked if they would have done something about the weapon fragility system. I don't know anybody who liked that. And like I said, like we're all we're like all Monster Hunter fans. Like we want to go and grind to get that badass weapon. You know, like pull it out and it, it glows blue and bursts into flames and a, a light shoots up into the heavens. And then you look over and you see another sword and you're like, oh, that one looks way cooler. Um, you know, it's that it's that kind of mouse on a wheel thing. I love collecting. I'm, I'm uh, one of my favorite things of Wulong is collecting all of the weapons that I'm probably never going to use because I can have any of them and I can switch and spec and I can be like a water mage now and just do what the fuck ever I want. Um, same with Elden Ring. Like you know, I farmed all of those goddamn horn weapons. Was I actually planning to use them? No. 
I'm never going to do a horn weapon faith playthrough. But was it fun to blow little magic bugle bubbles at people just for shits and giggles? Like, yeah, it's it's a completionist thing. It's the same idea as like when you get that little trophy or check mark, but it's not just this symbol and a pat on the head. It's a weapon or an item that you're just never going to use. But you can still look at it in your inventory and try it on and use it if you really want to. So like it's they took that concept that that Pavlovian idea of I want to chase gear and when we're actively going to undermine that so that you in fact cannot do that. We're going to make that thing that you like and some games are built around actually impossible. Like dude. And I wouldn't even mind it if after you went through all the shit to get the master sword, it still breaks. It just eventually heals like okay cool. Better not get into fights too often I guess. That'd be a damn shame. I have a question for the for the folks in the in the in the chat. Oh, um, and this is and I know what the answer is going to be, so I'll just and I'll just say it before you guys say it. It's like, oh, well, that's that's how every Zelda is. But I'm like, oh, and I always wondered this, and I and you know, I, I'm a Zelda fan. I, I played pretty much all the Zelda games, all the mainline ones at least. Um, and I, something that always irked me is like, really, Ganondorf again. <laughs> I'm like that's always I don't know for some reason that's always irked me because I never I even think thought I think and I could be wrong here but because Zelda's real convoluted but it's one of two things it's it's like there, there's always a lighthouse kind of thing like there's always a Ganondorf right mm-hmm. or that originally when the Triforce split and bound itself it carries a remnant of the souls of those who touched it and it kind of like reincarnates with them that's why Link always has the Triforce, of, it's implied he still has the Triforce of Courage in him. Like, it's bound to his soul. And so you have, uh, like, they're, they're supposed to write, uh, one's like Courage, um, the other one's Power, and the other one is Spirit, something like that. And so Ganondorf is the Triforce of Power. So it's thematic that, like, almost anybody who utilizes the Triforce of Power or the Triforce four power reasons are going to tap into that and almost kind of become a Ganondorf vessel. Or it's a big multiversal t- thing with time travel. Nobody actually fucking knows. It's a huge rabbit hole. There's multiple timelines, theories out the wazoo. Yeah, I you know I always thought like it'd be cool to get like because I know there's there's some I forgot which one there's there's a there's one or two that didn't have Ganondorf from like the most re- some of the three D ones at least, um, but. I know this one had it, uh, Breath of the Wild had it, uh, Twilight Princess had it. So it's like, I don't know, I always, I always kind of like... I'm it's weird and ill-defined. Yeah. Here's, uh, you know what that just reminded me of, though? Um, a Link to the Past? No, not a Link to the Past. Um, what was the one before that with the Mirror World? Fuck, I'm blanking on the name. You don't know what I'm talking about, right? Super Nintendo one? Oh, uh, Link to the Past? Is that Link to the Past? Super yeah. Nintendo, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, the, yeah, 64 is Ocarina of Time. Yeah, Link to the Past. Link to the Past actually did a great job of having the same map twice in one game and actually making it vastly different and interesting. So it'll be really interesting to see kind of how the current one does at recycling the landscape in a second game. Because I, I, you know, I think it's harder to do two two of the same map in the same game. You're like, hey, there's a whole other world, and it looks just like this one, except kind of different. Okay, so like if... I, I don't know. It's, I don't want to go back and play my Switch anymore. I, I'm, it's just... It's made for child's hands, and it looks like shit, and I don't even know where the fucking charger is anymore, and I just don't want to do it, man. Um... The game, the game looks cool. Like I, I, I'm really trying to say all the good and bad things about this because everybody thinks that we just talk shit, but it, it looks interesting. I just don't know if I want to fuck around with my Switch anymore, man. Yeah. Um, I want to move on to the next question. It's also about uh, the new Breath of the Wild, whatever, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, the mob hits. All right. Um, does the last Tears of the Kingdom trailer proved that the game was a copy and paste of Breath of the Wild. Is this game worth a $70 price tag? Isn't it the same discussion that we had with God of War Ragnarok? Kind of. 
that's what it sounds like. So we're having the same discussion again. It's like I, I say, just refer to the all the arguments that we said about that game. Because yeah. most of them applies here. Like, oh yeah, it's the same animations, the same assets. It's just more of the same game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, and it's seventy dollars because games these days. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, refer to our previous conversation. Yeah. I, I don't know. Again, I just don't know what. Again, if people want to ask the same questions, I think I'll just start saying like, yeah, just just refer to the old arguments we made about this game and that game. It's like, yeah, it's again, this is game development these days. It's just it's more. More of the same for more. Yeah. All right. Um, also for Mob Hits, has the Legend of Zelda series maintained a better status than Final Fantasy over the years? That is an interesting question. I don't because I don't know that what the metric easy. is. It, it, well, is it what is the metric here? I don't understand. I feel like I feel like engagement, uh, yeah. sales. Everything. I think I feel like just in terms of hype, sales, uh, critical acclaim, just ever, just all tie in into one sort of thing. I feel like Legend. It's not even close. Legend of Zelda uh, is is done a better job than Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy's done a, a great job because they've they've stayed relevant all these years, and they always bring up great games every year. Well, I mean, not every year. Yeah. Every every time they release a new Final Fantasy game, um, unless it's online, but they're still popular too. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think Legend of Zelda just has like sort of the catch all stats for for them. They have the critical acclaim, they have the sales, they have the the expected sort of quality towards the games. Um, and yeah, I, that's my answer. I don't I don't have the stats, so I can't answer this. So I don't know. What about the rest of you guys? So no, Fantasy has changed so much. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. Ahead, yeah, man. I mean, Final, Fan- Final Fantasy is uh, almost not even the same game anymore. You know, it's sort of it's it's an action it's a action RPG more a hack and slash now than a than a than a classic turn based. So, I mean, though Zelda has sort of stayed within the same line of its you know previous ones. You know, granted, you have more a little more abilities, but it didn't officially change genres. Yeah, because the thing about like, Final Fantasy is it's built on every single game is different from the last. Um, and yeah. Zelda, I know there's been different entries. Don't get, you know? Don't get on my ass about that. Um, but it does seem more consistent than Final Fantasy because Final Fantasy purposely not supposed to be consistent. You know. Well, it's purposely not supposed to be consistent, but also the other thing is, you know, it's different worlds, different worlds allowing them to sort of. You know, it's only fi- only Final Fantasy name in name only. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a mm. only the earlier games had some sort of connection between them, but not in the later ones. The only thing but I would no, say, no Final Fantasy had that. You know, it's just a little. I mean, they had things. similar, like you know, some of the older ones had the you know the crystal stuff and all of that. Yeah, yeah, stuff, but like Final like Final factor. Fantasy one is not the same story as two, not the same three as three, not the same thing as four, not the you know what I'm saying. But yeah, they had those little things like they they had the chocobos, they had the 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 um, the summons, summons. They, had, they had the um, you know the well the chocobos yeah. weren't even in those games though. No, they were. Way. They started they in three, I believe. That's where they started introduced. Yeah. But yeah, no, but the Final Fantasy games are you could literally play them. In any order you'll be all right you know it doesn't yeah, matter the only the, the only difference is the you know the advancements in gameplay yeah, and, yeah, off yeah. Uh, and obviously a person i also would say a person who plays modern final fantasy would not want to play previous final fantasy games just because of the the way the the gameplay is yeah yeah no that makes sense all right um another sponsored question uh this one is from Eurocar, who's sponsoring mob hits this one's interesting. All right. Um, Hip Hop Gamer recently claimed that Spider-Man 2 would feature a similar dimension hopping mechanic uh, to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. He also said it will have some kind of Spider-Verse feel or inclusion. What are your thoughts on this? Can we take what was said seriously? So yeah, if for you don't know, Hip Hop Gamer tweeted out that uh, Spider-Man 2 is going to have the same dimension hopping mechanic as Rift Apart, and it's going to have some Spider-Verse stuff in it. Um, I don't know if this is real or not. I hope this is false because I like the fact that the first Spider-Man game was pretty rounded. If you start tossing in the multiverse, it's going to fuck this whole game up. You don't even need the multiverse. Miles Morales is already in the fucking game. He, he's already there. You don't need to do this shit. You know, so well, maybe, I, they can, maybe they can go to a verse where he speaks good Spanish. 
Yeah. Oh shit. You know. So. <laughs> so yeah. But my. I, I'm. All I'm saying about this. I'm not going to talk about the the legitimacy or not. I just hope it's not true because that would be terrible. Bro, you just so got I mean, beef. Uh, I got beef. Yeah. Because yeah, I like the fact that the first game was kind of grounded. I don't want those dimension hopping nonsense. You know. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna let Brian go first because yeah. I want to hear his take. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, it's a short take. Uh, Tony, I am totally with you, like, right there. But the sad reality is that the kids are into the multiverse these days. I know, I know. And this is why I, I think this is probably going to happen. I, I, okay, I should do the caveat. I don't want it to happen. I think it's going to happen. Okay, here's the only reason I think that's stupid, Tony. That's like being like, I want Wolverine. I just don't like the mutant stuff. Like, Miles Morales, the, the multiverse has been a part of the Miles Morales story. No, Since it hasn't. Not this only one. until the movie. Yeah. Not, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. No, only only yeah. until the movie. No, they bled it over to the comic only, books eventually. Only, pretty quickly, yeah, didn't the they? Thing is that no, the oh, thing oh, is that they, yeah. because that was them when they did that stupid crossover where they had Peter Parker calling the Spider Man and then they closed down the, 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 the destroyed the stupid ultimate, ultimate universe rather than let, letting him live in his own universe, which I think is still the thing he should be. He should be his own own spider-man in his own universe not one spider-man of a thousand in the same universe but okay now we're already we're already in a world where now in this game we're in a world where miles morales already exists fine why are we going into the multiverse it makes no fucking sense and remember you well, right, you, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you, you, you can't say the multiverse was a part of miles morales would literally for like six or seven years he was in the ultimate universe that's it he was just there he didn't move you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but like it's been years now since like it, he's he's been pretty. He, I'd say he's more closely tied to the multiverse than just about any other multi Marvel character. Be only wow. multiverse once yeah. in the comics. Yeah, yeah, he only yeah he only made the transition once. That was it. I can, <laughs> you know? okay, I can, I can kind of get how Brad can say that, um, and I think it boils down to the question: Has in in the original Marvel universe, was Miles Morales ever there? As they, in, not they not, retconned not, him. They retconned him in, later on. No, he wasn't. That's okay. Yeah. So, so, so I'm thinking that if Miles is tied to the Ultimate Universe, then hence he's tied to the idea of the multiverse in that aspect. In that, thank you. He, he exists in the alter in the other universe, and hence. Due to the fact that there being a multiverse, he exists. But why do so we need to introduce that, in that when he's already in the game world already? Because his entire conception was... No, it doesn't! No, it, no, 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 I'm stopping no, you right no, now. No, Again, no, no. for six years, he was in oh, the yeah. ultimate universe on his own. No fucking crossover whatsoever. That, that, no, I will... Push yeah, back okay. against the conception bullshit. That Wait, is falsely you, you wrong. Finish, no, no, because okay. you're talking bullshit right now. <laughs> no. Okay, d just stop that. You say what you gotta say, but he it was not part of the concession. That's false. Okay, cool. What's the ultimate universe? You it says universe in it. Yeah. So go ahead. Tell you, me what, what the no no yeah, no. It was what a is the ultimate universe? Yeah, it's is a, it the mainline yeah. Marvel universe? It's it, is yeah. it the standard universe that all the people in or is it a different okay. alternate universe? No, that it's other characters the ultimate universe, not the multiverse. There's a difference. That's, no, like, no, that's, the, that's the, like that's like that's like that's like say that's like saying Spider Man Peter Parker was always conceptualized as a multiversal character because he was part of the six one six universe. That's exactly what you're saying about Miles Morales right now, bro. No, except he was an alternate version from a different universe. That was the whole thing. He was an alternate version. Yeah, there was a Peter Parker was, okay. in the Ultimate Universe, so there he's not an alternate alternate version. Yeah, he's a, a new character. He's a new character. Who the, yeah, who, who became Spider Man. Okay, exactly. so how do we have Peter Parker died? So how do we have? Um, I'm looking at this from the top down. Like, how do we have two consecutive Spider Men that aren't in the same world, but aren't in different universes? I don't understand okay. the question. Right. Oh, there was two. There was two. There was two Spider Men. Like there was an Ultimate Spider Man. It was essentially a reboot of the of the Spider Man mythos. Yes, Spider-Man was back to being young and all of that sort of stuff, and you followed all the his stories, and event eventually he died, and Spider and uh, and Miles Morales didn't cross over from an alternate universe. He died. No, I'm not he saying he crossed over from a different universe. So it's it's a, okay. So, so, so okay. 
Like, it's like what ifs. What ifs all exist in alternate universes. They don't have to travel the multiverse to exist in an alternate universe. Peter Parker dies in Miles Morales, right? But he's alive in his comic book. That's you can't be both alive and dead. No, no, so no. We're no. Talking- Brett, 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 okay, in the Ultimate Universe, there's a younger Peter Parker, right? He died. Miles Morales of that same universe took over, right? Then yes. there's Peter Parker of another. They were completely separate things. They were not even interlinked at all. Understand? They don't have to be linked. That's what I no. don't think you're you're not understanding. No, but uh, I think that's nobody what has to. That, I nobody in either comic that. book. Nobody in either comic book has to even know that there's a multiverse for you, the reader, to be like, huh, there's two different universes here. One where Peter died and one where he didn't. And they're both canon. Okay. Like if I if I had Conan the Barbarian, right? And Conan fucking dies and Red Sonia takes his place. And then I release another Conan novel. And Conan either has to come back from the dead or this isn't the same universe where Conan just died. It, it, it is conceptual. But, you don't have to spell it out. What I'm not saying why, that they traveled the multiverse. What I'm saying is it clearly, Miles Morales has always existed on a different timeline than the other Peter Parker. Because the okay, other Peter Parker never okay. died. You know what? Fair enough. But in the... This universe, the the video game universe, the video game he universe. was always there. He didn't come from somewhere else. Understand? No, I know. So I, know. So, I knew so, that. So that's what I'm saying. You don't need to introduce this multiverse nonsense because the character is already there. That's my point. It, it's it is not an integral part of his storyline whatsoever. It was not at all for the first six years of his conception at all. It was, the multiverse was not part of Miles Morales. So my the thing I'm pushing against is that this is part of his character. It was not even talked about in his comic books at all. Did, were there, the, only, the only time it became a thing is when the movie came out, where uh, the, the multiverse. The existence of the multiverse became part of his origin. Yeah, like P- Peter Parker. You guys Parker. keep explaining this. I yeah. get that. I know that. I understand that. I get it. Miles Morales never jumped through dimensions, and it wasn't part. It wasn't like he opened the multiverse, opened and spat him out. I know that. But I'm saying you can't have two books with two different people being the same spider. Like you can't have two books where one guy's dead, and one guy's alive, existing in the same universe. If there are two universes. Side by side, that is by definition a multiverse. Okay, who, we're not talking about that. And my okay, my whole point was on its conception when they made the Miles Morales book, they sat around a room and went, "There's got to be a multiverse to eat." That that's a prerequisite, a premise that has to go on before this. It doesn't have to exist in the comics. Nobody in the comics even has to know about this, but our readers have to know this is a different world, and a, a world is a universe. And multiple universes is a multi-universe. By definition, from his inception, he was connected to the multiverse, which supports my original statement of, if there's any characters that I see that would do this, he would be the most likely, because he was conceived with the idea of being from another world, to the reader at least. He has had a storyline where he breaches through the multiverse, and he has now two movies where he's gone through the multiverse. I don't think that there is a Marvel character who is better suited to tackle the whole multiverse thing. And I realize that you don't like it, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't exist anywhere. Right. And it's so like my, I'm kind of coming at it from like, well, multiverse fans should be able to see this kind of thing. If they want multiverse, they should be able to go somewhere. And this is probably one of the more appropriate places to go. That was my whole point. All right, f- fair enough. I just think it's fucking stupid. I think I, I like the, the world they established in the first game. You already have Miles Morales there. He doesn't need to be coming from another universe. He's already there. You don't need to be murking everything around with this multiverse nonsense. We've had enough of this shit. Please don't let this happen. But it probably will because, you know, because of these fucking it's, stupid It's the movies. thing now. Yeah, it's exactly. A, every, every, every garb, every every piece of, 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 multi, of culture now. Every hack uh, writer is using this bullshit. Is doing know? multiverse yeah. bullshit uh, 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 writing. You know? Yeah, well, everybody uses gravity, too. Oh, it's, uh, no, it's not, yeah. it's not integral Brett, no, to the Yeah, Brett, no one, no one, like no, we're, again, we're not against the multiverse because we think it's fake. No, it's because it's a lazy storytelling tool. That's it's why. always been a lazy storytelling yeah. writing. It it, it, uh, it undoes the death of characters. Hey, we could just put it in, you know, so in there. It makes it makes it easy for them to not make any sort of legitimate fucking decisions. 
<laughs> What's going to happen in that stupid Flash movie that's going to come out? Yeah, they're going to reset right. everything. Yeah. They're going to reset there's... everything because because they couldn't get their shit right. Because they didn't even bother to, to, to write anything of, of note. So, okay, fix it uh, fix it in universe with a multiverse, a, a lousy multiverse a plot line. Doesn't that just mean you you don't like do sex machinas? Is, isn't it the same thing in an espionage movie when somebody gets a call from the president and it just undoes all the consequences? Like, bad writing is bad writing. Yeah, you can is. do good writing in a multiverse. It's yeah, not you like you well, can't write I a good say, multiverse. No, and, and, and listen, some of my favorite stories have been multiverse stories. Just the way they've been done, especially in the last five years, have been Awful, yeah, as of, you know, as of now, as of late, it's just been it's just been like, OK, we can have we, we can we can avert character development in a Spider-Man movie, developing any sort of villains in the Spider-Man, this, this, this Spider-Man movie, which is, you know, so like he doesn't even have his own villains. He didn't even have any of those. Villains. You're just depending on whatever was uh, existed before to do that, to skip oh, to the, yeah, the to third the end. To movie, the end yeah. yeah, to skip to the end, to skip to the end goal of having uh you know, of having Spider-Man versus <laughs> part of the Sinister Six. Yo, yo, fuck you, Russo brothers. Why did you have to bring this shit in? Yeah, oh God, <laughs> you yeah. know everyone is doing it. <laughs> by the way, yeah. by the way, I do, I do agree with Brett on on most of the conversation. Even, I'm not too nerdy enough to get into this shit, but I agree with Brett. Okay, fair enough. Um, anyway, I want to move on because I'm I'm already too worked up. Uh, oh, yeah, I actually have a thing to add. Um, and again, this is kind of like it's more aimed towards Brett. Again, Brett, coming from someone who enjoyed the um, Into the Spider Verse film, and I totally understand what you're saying about the concept of Miles. But I think what Tony's trying to say is given that they already have a universe where Miles and Peter exist as a Spider Man in the Spider Man game, what need is there for a multiverse yeah. in that game? Because again, they they have a blank slate. Like they are again, it's its own universe at at its point. So, what what do they need the multiverse for if they can just write in anything that they want? Since nothing's established there. I mean, I, I don't know what the I don't know what they need it for. I don't know that they do need it. Like they they it may be a source of conflict, not necessarily a source of resolution. Um, like. Oh, okay, like the bat who laughs, right? Like that's a multiverse thing, and that is pure conflict. Come in, and, and it's a cool story. You guys, I'm, you guys know what the bat who laughs is? The Batman who laughs, and yeah, my thing is like Brett. If you want to start introducing this stuff five games in, sure. Not on the second game. Give us some breathing yeah. room. Please. They've, they've already. They that's all I'm asking a, for. You guys a, already have a really cool Spider-Man universe set up. Let's play with that a little bit until. I mean, this is technically the third game. Um, yeah, third game, but you know what I'm saying? Like, start some mess. Stop. Like, let, let it breathe they, a little. They, but they already have a plot of the Venom thing coming in, and they yeah. have a Craven thing. So you know, it's okay if we we stick with that before we start going. You know, going cockamamie crazy balls yeah. into into alternate universe. But let's let's finish what we're doing here before we start dancing around in the uh, in the multiverse. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. I'm I'm just of the mindset of like, let's let's wait and see how the story is. They they. It's not like they failed to deliver good writing. I don't think that they're going to necessarily just trip it up now. But like, if if it's full of a bunch of bullshit, oh, we can just do whatever we want because because multiverse. Like, meh, okay. But like, why don't we see what the story is instead of just assuming that they're going to write it poorly? I'm not assuming. I'm just worried. There's a difference. It could be great. It could be. Um, I'm just worried. That's yeah. all. Yeah, I, the thing is, like. And the thing is, we're we're literally getting oversaturation of multiverse. Yeah, we're even getting much. multiverse. We're even getting multiverse movies that are not even related to stupid comic books. <laughs> oh, like that fucking uh, what's her face movie, Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, the like, Michelle yeah, Yeoh. Yeah, I was movie. like, okay, really? that movie was I mean, awesome. Again, yeah, I, and I won't say, and I'm not going to say anything about that film because I haven't seen it. I heard it's very well done, but again, we're so oversaturated with this this silly multiverse stuff. It's like now everything's a multiverse, but you know, whatever. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, a couple more questions here. Um, one subset. Um, is it just me or does anybody else feel like there should be a good boxing game right now? I wish Adam was here for this one. Oh, no, man. We need a fucking good boxing game. How how yeah. y'all not doing this? Yeah, we, we, need, we, we, need, yeah, we need a boxing game with, with accurate sweat physics. Was that Fight Night 3 or something back in the day? It's like they were touting that. It's like, oh, sure, look at look at the sweat on that motherfucker's, uh, you know, um, clothes or whatever. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, bro. We, need a, we definitely we definitely need a good boxing game. But the problem is, is like there's all this licensing bullshit that has to do with all the boxers. So they'd have to go in and get every single boxer's likenesses and all that other stuff. And all that shit is a, a bunch of things. I wish, to be honest, I would love a game that had generic boxers, like going in with like ready to rumble hmm. or something like that, where you just That'd have a fun. bunch of fake boxers and stuff. Hey Manny, how about if you how about if you kind of mix that up with like something like the bouncer? Uh, I mean, are, are like Square Enix characters beating the shit out of each other? I don't know about that. No, like, kind of the kinds of like uh, like um, how was it? The uh, Absolver. Like Absolver was this weird like you walked in like you just walked into a fight and it then felt like a fighting game, but you were still in an open world, but you just kind of like walked up to the person went like, and now we're fighting. Um, no, I, mean, I would. Look- not- I mean, I, I sort of want like a straight up. I mean, I agree with the the, 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 the who asked the question. Like, I, I kind of just want a, like a, a simple boxing game. I don't really need to have a whole world. I don't need. I don't need a world for the walk. The boxer to walk to walk around in and stuff. Well, like I just that. mean I just mean like a street boxing game. Like it's it's. Yeah. I, I guess you can do it. Like I just feel like the uh, what is it the the formula of like Street Fighter like pick your guy round starts then you have to do another fight like i just kind of liked walking from one fight to the other it was it was just kind of more efficient and i would to- i would totally play just like a bare knuckle boxing game that was you know felt like a boxing game but was kind of built more like yakuza that's a little bit more ambitious than what what, what they're asking for and I, which i'm what i'm sort of looking for like again just a simple box game but no need- no licenses eh, no licenses you don't need any licenses just, just you know, you just have a bunch of different characters that you put in there. Maybe you can have some that looks sort of like, you know, like I don't know, Mike Tyson's Punch Out is not really a, a like a real sort of boxing game, but you know, all those characters in that that game are all fake except for Mike Tyson. And even then, they when they removed him, they put a fake boxer in there. So yeah, having just a, bo- a really cool boxing game. Like there was that one that the the Creed game that came out for VR. Which I, um, oh man, how, it was a long time ago when they did it for PlayStation VR, but I mean, I would like to see a side by side sort of, you know, you know, along the lines of the, the UFC titles where they have actual boxers. But here's the thing, like when you got a game where you could literally kick and punch people, would that game be that interesting to the, to the people where you just punch? Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, next question here from Mr. One Step Set. Um, did Microsoft and Ubisoft just shadow drop their joint venture together with Ubisoft Plus becoming a part of Xbox like EA Play at an $18 price tag? This is the first time I'm hearing about this. No, I think, you know, like you, like, I mean, you mentioned in the in the question, it's EA's already done it and that really wasn't an indication of anything. So um, I, I really doubt anything like it's just you know Ubisoft that that was bound to go to Game Pass. It was like every every one of those services are 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 going back going to Microsoft, um, and Sony if they if they would have them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. And the last two questions of the night, Mister Lego Bro. This one. These questions are very interesting to me. Oh. Um. First one is, and this one seems ambiguous. Um, what are your thoughts on all the dog piling that happens in the gaming industry? I wish he gave us some examples because there's a lot of dog piling depending on where you look, you know. Well, like, uh, like what kind of dog piling? Because dog he piling happens. Specify, yeah. dog, dog piling happens on both sides of the of the oceans, you know. It happens. In like everything. It uh, sort of happens in everything. Yeah. So, I mean. Um, hmm. So yeah, I'm not. Just, I, I wish he gave us an example, you know. And and to and to be honest, it's, that's really that's really just most games at, at this point, if, especially those that are uh, exclusives or uh, any ties to a, a company. For example, um, you know, Brett just mentioned like it's like well, why is everybody dogpiling on Redfall? Um, and then for me, if you were to ask me, sometimes I'm like, why is everybody dogpiling on The Last of Us? I understand the backlash, but it's over. It's super overcorrected at times. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I think that's a good anchor point. It's like, yeah, every time an exclusive drops, doesn't matter which console it comes on, except for Nintendo, they, you know, the different conversation. Like, you're yeah. going to get some dogpiling on every single exclusive. And yeah, you're right. The latest is, uh, 
you know, Redfall. Everybody's jumping on, on it because it's 30 frames a second. So it, people like going on the bandwagon. They like to, you know, feel good about shitting on things, you know. That's just how human nature. Humans are fucking awful, man. They really are. So no surprise there. But, you know, but like Manny said, you see dogpiling everything now. Like Twitter and places like that are just, they're made for stuff like that to just jump on people and have mobs going after people and shit. It's disgusting, man. Like social media really, really like what happened? The only mobs we like are the hits. Yeah, that's the only mob we have. Like, yeah, social media just really exposes w w the true core of humanity, how fucking awful we are, you know? Um, all right, and the last question of the night. I'm being cheery tonight, aren't I? Um, what do you make of all the... What do you make of people uh, with big Twitter followings who do nothing but talk about console wars all day? Fucking idiots. That's what I think of them. Fucking idiots. Like, and they make their whole car not career because they have like a hundred thousand followers. They, you don't you don't make money off that shit, you know. But they all day every day talk about console wars, console wars, and it's like, I get it. It could be fun for a little bit, but like you do this for years and years and years, and you make that your whole identity. That's not an identity, you know. Being against Sony or Xbox, that's not a fucking identity. You dumbass, you know. But I, yeah, it's it's stupid, um, and it's a shame that they have so many followers. And you know, even big YouTube channels, you know, all they do every fucking video shitting on companies, right? And then my favorite of these guys, and now Carlos, I know they're your favorite too. The flip floppers, right? You have these dudes that are hardcore <laughs> PlayStation We're guys. Yeah, we kind of are, are we? <laughs> you know, you have the you, we have this one dude specifically, right? The truth, right? That's all I'm gonna say about that. Dude started off as a <laughs> hardcore Xbox guy, right? Went over to PlayStation mm -hmm. just as vehemently pro PlayStation as Xbox. Now he's back on the other side, Xbox it's all like, day now. And, and I'm like, what? How, how do how do you, how do you how do you how does your neck not snap with the with the fucking switch you did? Like holy shit, dude! You know. And now I hear uh, crap gamers back to being an Xbox guy again. You know, because remember, that was his whole deal. He was a big Xbox guy back in the day. Then he turned over to PlayStation last generation. Now he's back to being an Xbox guy. But, uh, but and, I'm like, and yeah, I don't fucking get it, man. And it's not even like, like, obviously, the you can, I, I switch sometimes, like, from my preferences, like, 360 was my preference. Uh, PlayStation 4 was my preference. Uh, don't really have one now. Yeah, but, um, but there's no hatred of the other system. It, it, That's the exactly. difference. Exactly. And though, and those people that we're talking about, it's like, like they they're they they don't just have to be like fans of a system; they have to hate the other one. That's the that's the part where I'm like, come on, really? Like, let's just enjoy what you have and what you're enjoying. It's yeah, like it, it just feels like they're just trying to, you know, start a fight with with the other guy because it's the other guy. Yeah, and then the thing is, like, okay, if it's a PlayStation centric podcast, most of it is actually going to be talking about Xbox. And if it's an Xbox podcast, most of it is going to be talking about PlayStation. The, these guys mm -hmm. don't talk about the games they like. They talk about the enemy, the games they hate, you know? It's very yeah. strange. Like, why would you want to do that? You live your whole life like that. Like, fu fu life is fucking miserable <laughs> enough as it is. You're going to inject more of that misery in there, you know? But I get people like that shit, you know? Like I said, people are fucking awful. They just feed off this negativity, you know, as clearly as evidenced by their following, right? And I've said this on Throwdown too, man. Throwdown would be a lot bigger if we jumped into this shit, into that, you know, pile of garbage that, that you see from these people. We don't. We keep it honest. We're not put because some of these guys are also fake. Not some. A lot of these guys are fake as shit. They're just going along with the trend. Oh, the PlayStation? I'm gonna shit on them now. Oh, Xbox? I'm yeah, gonna shit be, on them. It's because now. it's you know? be, it's because it's because the negativity gets them gets them attention. Yep. You know, in other words, whether it's people that agree or whether it's people that don't like what they're saying, you're getting. You know, what, what was it? How was the um the, the the one the one line from um Howard, the Howard Stern movie? It was like you know people you know people utterly yeah. hate him, and they still listen. You know, they, they and then people who like him, they still listen. That's why he's got a big, huge following. It's the same shit. Yeah. You say these, you gave these hot takes, and you literally start targeting this shit. People are going to come right at it. Yeah. And it's uh, it's unfortunate, and it's a total fucking rope a dope too. It is, yeah. 
Yeah, you no, could, we yeah. could totally, yeah. we could totally play that fucking game. We could, we could, we could totally be that, be that stupid ass, stupid ass podcast, but that we wouldn't be any better than the fuckers out there yeah. doing this shit. Yeah, I, I'm gonna probably butcher, but it was like uh, half a Howard Stern supporters. Uh, like, okay, like here half a Howard Stern supporters. Why they listen to him? Because they want to hear what he has to say next. Here's half of his haters. Why do you listen to him? Because they want to hear what he has to say next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Great movie, by the way, uh, Private Parts. Um, Howard Stern's turned weird, though, lately. Yeah, he's, a, he's odd these days. Yeah. Um, sucks because I was one of my heroes growing up. But, you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, social media is fucking trash. Humans are terrible. And, yeah, there you go. Here, here's the thing. But that, I think that the, the thing that I understand, like, it, it, I, I don't want I don't want to sound all doom and gloom because the thing about it is those things are the loudest, but the other stuff is the most the most meaningful. And I would say to everybody to look for those meaningful things, not just looking at the surface of all the bubbling that's all going up on the surface. You know, if you don't like, if you're not liking what any of these guys are saying and saying on there, don't even look at them because that's the most powerful thing you can do. Not li not listening to them because you hate them or because you like them, just totally cutting them fucking off. And that is the true way to to, to, to gain power. Yeah, but like you like you said, people tune in. Kind of like voting with your wallet, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, like you, you said, people tune in because they want to hear what they have to say next. You, you, know? you yelling, you yelling at at at, 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 at Nintendo or or um, what is it, Microsoft or or PlayStation? That doesn't mean a goddamn thing. You want to know what really they really pay attention to? If you stop paying attention to them, if you just totally cut them off and let them run, that's it. If a, if a, a bunch of people decided to do that, they'll to, they'll change. A lot of those companies will change their tune right quick. Because you're hurting them where it really yeah. matters. Well, in this really case, it's not, it, thankfully, in this case, it's not companies. It's just fucking idiots on social media. Same, same you know? bullshit with them, too. If you want those motherfuckers to stop, don't even fucking acknowledge them. Make them disappear. Just let them fall to the bottom. Hmm. There you go. But you, but but again, that's what everybody does. They see, they get, you know, they see, oh, dear, oh dear, dear. that's what happens. But if you were, if you, if you literally just go against all of the, you know, your, your, your natural reactive, uh, you know, person, you know, your, the, your natural reaction to what some of these crazy ass people are saying and just let them slide, just let them go and not even say anything. Every single person, just let them go. They, they won't get the thing that they're really, str really tr uh, craving. Attention. Attention. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Pig Dan goes, how many fanboys have you guys blocked at this point? I know personally, I've, I've probably blocked thousands of people, man. Um, to be honest, to be honest, I've actually been been relatively good. Uh, it's I haven't really blocked any sort of fanboys, to be honest, because I don't. I, to be honest, I'm not Tony. Tony Tony ignites people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I yeah. Like, I literally have thousands of people blocked. It's crazy. Yeah. No. I, I've not. The only time. The only things I have blocked are are those idiotic NFT things trying to send you, hmm. sell you things all the damn time. And is you know whenever you get one of those stupid uh, like. You know, fake uh, women say, saying, "Hey, you want to see my yada yada in your fucking DMs?" Yeah, yeah I still that have shit. them open. Yeah, so that's the ones I block. But I've never had really had a fan or anybody any sort of fanboys coming at me. And even if I do have some people, like I said, so apparently I made a controversial statement about the stupid of uh, death of Superman and return of Superman, and a couple of people getting all inflamed about it. I just said, just let that shit slide. I'm like, oh, whatever. I said what I need to say. You guys can go get all stupid about it, but I'm not. Because right, that's falling for the rope of dope. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask you about that after the show. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Can't say nothing on Twitter, man. Um, yep. All right, let's wrap it up. I know we don't have anything to plug. Or do we have anything to plug? No, not anything over here. And uh, Adam is Adam yeah. is uh, Adam's recovering, and Chris is, is in Odin's sleep. So, yeah. Yeah. Carlos, what do you got? What are you What are you doing? <laughs> well, we're on We're on hiatus at the moment, so nothing to plug here. Um, shout out Shout out to everyone as usual, but yep, you know, no no sh no shows at the moment. I'll plug the coalition dot com. Yeah, right now. Shout out to the coalition. You know, shout out to Richie Bailey. Oh yes. Oh yes. All right, good stuff, right. man. Anyway, um, make sure you follow Throwdown on Twitch and Twitter. Join a Discord where the conversations and the rumors are always popping. 
You could also find us on any podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's Throwdown Show, two words, Throwdown Show. Throwdownshow.com to listen to past episodes. And if you've been watching us on YouTube and enjoyed the content, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when our premieres go live. Links to everything down below. Once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I was joined by Emilio Lopez. See you next time. Carlos Romero. Peace out. Brett Murdoch. It's been a real party, people. This In is... the multiverse. Hey. <laughs> Go, Brett. It was just... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and Brian Monjoma. So I guess that makes me a Bud Light hipster because I stopped drinking it way before it was popular. <laughs> that fucking <laughs> trash beer, you know? Don't drink that shit. Don't give Budweiser money, you know? All right, people, we will see you on the next one. Later. Peace. Later.